yellow CMS instruments. But in order to do so, we first need to set the machine up. The first thing we need to do is work with the computer. Select the LCMS solution icon and double click it, which will bring up this dialog box, which gives you a variety of selections for different modes you can do for the instrument, including an LCMS, and an HPLC and MS run, an LC, an LC only run, meaning an HPLC run only, or other instruments that have not yet been selected for this instrument. Well, what we're going to do today is an HPLC MS run, a traditional LCMS. So we're going to click first icon. You'll be prompted for your user ID along with your password. The HP will say HPLC will beep, meaning that it's talking to the computer. The first thing you need to do is to turn on the nebulizing gas, the nitrogen gas. Next, you need to turn on the photodiode array, the PDA, using this icon here. The PDA typically takes about half an hour for the bulbs and lamps inside to warm up. When you turn it on through your method development, make sure that you turn on the tungsten lamp as well as the deuterium lamp. As, that, as the PDA turns on, the lights over here will turn on, meaning that the PDA itself is operating. This here is the PDA. So the lamps are back inside there, and that's where they're turning on. Once the PDA has been turned on, the next thing we need to do is to purge the pumps. To purge the pumps, we need to turn the valves from their, on posi from their closed position to their open position by turning them 90 degrees counterclockwise. When these pumps are closed, any analyte traveling through the tubes will be going to the, the mass spec. When they're open, any analyte or solvent traveling through the tubes will go to waste. Once they've been turned, press the purge button, which is the center button. The purging is important because the purging removes any air within the lines. If there's any air traveling through the lines, it will back up through the instrument and basically the machine won't work. Now if you look down here, you can see the waste traveling through the waste line into the waste. So purging will typically take about five minutes. If the nebulizing gas has not been turned on, the pumps will shut off after about 30 seconds. So, going back to the computer screen, the next thing we need to do is to purge the auto sampler. To purge the auto sampler, select this icon and press it. Depending on the, diff on the method currently loaded into the machine, um, that will determine how long the purge of the auto sampler will take. A uh, typical purge time is usually about five minutes, and the auto sampler will be purged and ready to go. Following the purge, the pumps will be seen to have shut off. When that happens, we're ready to move on to the next step. First, close the valves by turning them one quarter turn counter uh, clockwise. At this point, we need to put on the columns. Now, in other videos, we've talked about the different columns that we have and the different columns we use. For today's run, we'll be using a 3 micron 50 by 2.1 millimeter column. When you do this, unscrew the caps. Always keep the caps on when the column is not in use for, for, to, to uh, protect the column. Columns can be very expensive, which is why we really want to maintain them. The column attaches here. At the, when the LCMS process is taking place, at this point the solvent has been pre-mixed and it's moving through, the solvent and the analyte have come together, uh, they're mixed together, and when you reach this point, this is where the separation occurs with the column. And if you'll notice, it's right before the PDA, so it feeds into the PDA here. So unscrew the tubing. This is a neat little connector here. This is used to just connect different wire, different bits of tubing together, but it's also used when uh, the LCMS is not in use, just to keep these tubes clean. 
you can't see it, but the peak tubing itself is extremely fine, and there's a very, very small hole in the bottom. Now, a good way to test, this is a good, this is a good time to demonstrate it, a good time to test whether or not there's a clog in your line, or if you have a crimped tube during cutting, is to turn on the pumps. You notice a little bit of fluid coming through right there. If a little bit of fluid's coming through, you know that your line is clear and that your hose isn't crimped at any point. So we're gonna shut that off now. I'm pushing the pump off button. I'm pushing the pump button again. Take your column. Make sure it's pointed in the right direction, the direction of flow. All columns will have some sort of an arrow on them because the flow is only one way through the column. Screw it onto the tubing like this. Turn on the pumps. The pumps need to run for about a half an hour with fluid and solvent traveling through the pumps uh, to equilibrate the columns. As we said before, the columns are packed with special silica materials that takes about half an hour for the pump, for the column to get used to the different material traveling through it. So we'll come back to this in about half an hour. For our demonstration today, we're going to be running a polyphenol through the instrument called Naringin. Before we run it, I'm going to show you how to prepare a sample of Naringin for running through the Okay, so we have our workstation ready. We have our methanol prepared. We have a 100 milliliter volumetric flask and its lid. Now both the flask and the beaker have been treated with a base bath, as we saw earlier, so we know that these are extremely clean right now. Anything that goes into the instrument needs to be extremely clean or else it's going to be there forever because whatever you put to the machine goes there forever. And since the machine is extremely sensitive, we need to keep everything extremely clean. So, the first thing we're going to do is measure out a small quantity of Naringin. To do that, take some whey paper, tear it into a smaller piece, Actually, we're going to throw this out. I'm going to do that one over again. Because again, we want to minimize any possible contamination. Open up the scale. Can you see the scale? Put your white paper inside. Make sure the paper isn't touching the edge of the scale. So we're going to make this a little smaller. If it's touching the edge of the scale, that'll throw off the measurement a little bit. Make sure the paper is only touching the scale, none of the outer ring. Make sure I pull that out as a self. The scale self-calibrates, so make sure nothing's on the scale as it's calibrating. Also, try not to touch the table as the scale is calibrating. Touching the table or any sudden movements can throw off the calibration. Still calibrating. Cameraman size. Enjoy editing this. Cal, what does that stand for? That stands for calibration. It calibrates in different increments. What about Cal O? That's the. That's, I believe this. Okay, Cal N. That's the important one. Cal N. Calibration is ended. Now open the door. Yep. They already know how to use a the scale. They should. Measuring can be harder than you think. Okay. Tear the scale. 
Now again, when working with the LCMS, we want to keep everything consistent. So only use this particular scale for anything that goes in the machine. That way we can keep track of how everything was measured. Don't use the scales in the other room, only use this particular scale. Okay, come over here. Open our new engine. Take out an extremely small quantity. Now our goal is to get down into the micromolar range. So this here is way too much for a micromolar. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to take a few flakes of this. It's about that much. I'm going to mass that. As, as the amount of material on the scale gets lower and lower, the scale becomes less and less accurate. So we're going to mass a slightly larger quantity of material. We're going to take it to about one ten thousandth of a gram, approximately. So we're going to settle on about um, uh, three thousandths of a gram, three, thirty-five thousandths of a gram, because we are much more confident of this measurement than if it were about one ten thousandth of a gram. So we take this quantity of material, and this is where it gets tricky. Very... as good as possible in the volumetric class. It's never going to be perfect, but it's about as close as we can get for our purposes. Now, I always like to dissolve a little bit of methanol in there next. Just to begin the dissolving process. So now you can see most of the material we put in there has already been dissolved by the methanol. Next thing we need to do is add the formic acid. So coming over to the hood, coming over to the hood, we're going to add one milliliter of formic acid to our uh, polyphenol. You want to add a quantity of formic acid because the formic acid helps in the ionization process. So we have here some 5% formic 